So let's wait a little. Okay. There it is. Yes, we are live on air right now, and I want to say a very good evening to you and uh, everyone listening to me all over the world. This is my Facebook page, and I'm talking about the post-COVID experience. Yesterday, we had a very exciting time with three people who give us their own insight as to what life would be after the COVID experience. And this evening we'll be talking specifically from the point of education. And uh, to start this course with us, we have uh, two people one from Germany and uh, the other from Lagos. Well, Cecilia Drew Jarier is from Germany, while uh, Mr. Raphael Francis is an education specialist from Lagos. We'll be having the third person join us in the chat soonest, but I want to know if we are really getting me clearly. Please yes, do sir, me a sir. favor, just type. If you are hearing me clearly, just type, you can hear me, so that at least we're sure we are not speaking to the air. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, so. <laughs> please, if you are hearing me clearly, anywhere you are around the world, please let me know where you are calling me from. If you're hearing me, I mean, where you are watching me from. <laughs> Gigi, thank you. Yes. Please, if you can hear me clearly, do let me know. Give me a shout out, please. Thank you, Princess <clears throat> Ajiboye Demora. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, okay. Uh, I know that. And this is two people can hear, then the whole world is listening. <clears throat> Once again, I want to say a big thank you for giving part of your time to uh, watch us discuss this very important issue of education in our country and in the world. Uh, it's not new to you right now that the, the COVID-19 experience has actually it affected everything about us starting from the way we live the way we interact to the way we do perform essential duties all around the world and specifically it has also affected the way we teach the way we learn and the way we go into research and of course, you do know that if we must make anything meaningful about life and living, we need to take real cognizance about education. Yeah. And right now, we do know that things are not the same anymore with the way education is going because of this COVID-19 experience. I want to ask Dr. Cecilia, how is the COVID-19 affecting the educational sector in your area? Okay. 
Thank you, Dr. Oeklome. <laughs> yeah, so just like everywhere else, um, Germany has been kind of tough, difficult. Um, I mean, amongst all the, most of the nations that first um, kind of started this lockdown, Germany was amongst because as a very much, second week in March, we already had about 40,000 um, cases of COVID-19 and right now we have over 100,000. So yeah, and schools have been on lockdown. Of course, initially they were on holidays around that March and now they're supposed to have been back um, at different institutions are supposed to have been open by now, but mm -hmm. they are not able to do that. So, um, yeah, so everyone is kind of affected, like everyone else. You know, people have been staying at home, people have not been able to work, but it's kind of a little easier in terms of going online because, for the most part, here before they've actually been having online courses before. So many of the studies are carried out online, they have internet access and all that and so it was kind of easier when you compare maybe Germany to Nigeria for example so the the, 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 the transition to to online platform or staying at home is not the difference is not really much if one really looks at it it's not really much of a problem except of course that you know every lecturer everybody has to then prepare and move with the new change but apart from that the transition is not really that affecting people or is not really that negative so to speak and of course and it's going to change in the next couple of weeks because um according to the government now um maybe in the next one week or so they want to try and ease the um lockdown or the the, the measures such that and they will have schools resuming back and of course maybe for the most part, online studies still continue. And but for primary and secondary school students, they want them to go back to school, maybe very few number of students at once. Or maybe especially for the exam classes, the uh, A-levels who are having exams to go to um, universities and all. So they want them to resume and of course sit down with two meter spaces amongst one another and all that. Yeah, but like I said, for the most part, it's actually been not that good but at least not bad at all okay yeah. uh, well uh, th those are beautiful success stories that we hear from germany but let's go back to nigeria now where we <laughs> uh, where we are yes Francis, <laughs> please tell us um, how has it been? good evening good evening everyone thank you for joining in our live broadcast. Um, thank you, Dr. Oikilome for this, and good to see you, Dr. Cecilia. Well, um, we can't we can say same of um, Nigeria. Internet connection is not so good, it's poor. Um, let's not talk about the, the, the very, very expensive cost of, of um, data. You know, I was reading up something earlier and I discovered that um, not just even, we're not even just talking about comparing Nigeria with Germany, for example. The, the gulf is too wide. That's going too far. Even with um, Northern, even with a country like South Africa and Egypt, I was talking with a friend yesterday and he was telling me that, I, I, I was talking to him, he was supposed to give us a presentation on WhatsApp. And he was like, I was like, oh yeah, how do we do your data? This? And he was like, come on, man, I live, I live with internet too far. Like I have it. I was like, oh, sorry. I thought I was talking to someone in Lagos. <laughs> so, Learning has been difficult. Learning has been difficult. Let's call it spade a spade. Um, and moving moving away from the classroom into to the online platform has not been a pleasant experience. Even in top schools, even in places, even in schools that we, we want to say are top schools, you know, not everybody in there have been able to cope with the pressure of having to learn to take their lesson online. I was talking to Dr. Albert earlier off camera that even most people that are even saying they are doing online learning right now, what you're doing is just have their teachers do videos and send to WhatsApp, let the parents watch without, you know, guidance, you know, thorough guidance. So the parents have, are very much involved in this now. I mean, a video has been sent to you on WhatsApp. You have to learn it. Or maybe an audio sent to you on WhatsApp, and then you have to learn and listen by yourself. So that, that only few people, like some very elite schools, are able to use the um, different online platforms that are available. And even at that, some parents are even already beginning to complain because they're feeling the burden of um, of one, like I said, data consumption, unstable network, 
unstable network, terrible. So I don't, I'm scared. I'm scared for the future of education in Nigeria. If this continues, if this pandemic continues, if, if the lockdown tarries longer than it should be, and then say we have to be home till September or the end of the year, a lot of children are going to be affected. Their education is going to be really, really affected. And let's not even talk about that. Oh, we have radio stations, TV stations, and all that that are doing learning. Where is even the electricity supply to even, to even stay true to this? How many people can afford um, to, to power their own electricity, to, to keep up with learning. So it's not, it's not, I'm not trying to be so negative, but this is just the reality. It's the, the future of education is not looking good if this lockdown continues. That's, that's my take. Um, you said the future. Yes, yes, Cecilia, you want to say yes, something? Sir, well, I have uh, Dr. Tun Rashid on, 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 online. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry, uh, the, no uh, I think I have some technical challenges. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you. I'm so sorry. Okay. I think you I have some technical challenges. No, pro no, no problem, sir. No problem. You're welcome. I is the U.S. going? Well, uh, everything is going on uh, fine. Just like in everywhere, people are reacting, people are responding, and people are revolting, <laughs> and uh, people, are, people are also adapting to these new uh, new realities. Yeah. You said people are revolting. I, I thought we were the yeah. only ones revolting. I didn't know that you were no. too. No, human, human beings are different everywhere. And human being is, uh, as uh, Aristotle says in his poetics, we are naturally a social animal. Exactly. And anything that exactly. takes up, that away from us, exactly. regardless <laughs> of our uh, of happiness or, or uh, enjoyment that you have, when that is taken away from anybody, there is bound to be reaction, revolutions, and so on and so forth. And so people are reporting because they feel that uh, the First Amendment, which is the right, the right to freely move, is being taken away from them. And uh, there are people who believe that the surest thing in life is death. And so they are not scared if the consequences is going to be sickness or death, they still want to die happily. Not alone inside <laughs> the <house>. Exactly. <laughs> so, 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 Dr. Rashid, well, you talked you talk about revolution. And uh, we, we now see that there's a paradigm shift from the way we used to learn to a new way of learning, yeah. which is uh, via the internet. What advantages yeah. of the do you see this potent to our environment where we are used to you know learning from people on a face-to-face -face basis well uh it has its advantages and it has its uh, disadvantages it is like talking about uh, the formal and non-formal uh, structure of education and uh, the, 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 there is a lot of disadvantages when it when we move online because there is the, the psychic preparedness that we have when uh, we are prepared when we are in a face-to-face -face situation in a class setting. There are other things that we consider that make uh, that also keep our mind fully prepared for such a class. Unlike when you are in a home setting, uh, you can see that I've been moving back and forth as I'm here now. It's an example of some of the challenges that we are going to have, some of the distractions that we are going to have when we move on. And uh, the technical challenges will also be there. And it is just like the difference. Let me let me come to our feet. It is just like the difference between seeing a play in the theater and watching a play in film. Mm. Mm -hmm. It is just like the difference that happens. 
the, the reason why theater continues to survive is that nobody can take away that that presence of both the performer and the audience. The audience. The audience. In yes. a something that and nothing else can replace it, and which is why theater still survive. But with film, the fact that uh, we have uh, limitations. So, and there are a lot of limitations. Some okay. uh, educational structure require practical, <laughs> practical engagement. Some involve having practical uh, expertise put into it. And with moving online, a lot will be compromised. Well, you, you talk about the aspect of compromise. We are... You know, we we are more in, within the world of ease, where we want to do things within the confines of ease. And uh, Cecilia, yeah. you, you you have uh, you you have done a lot of online interviews, online interaction with people. Don't you think that this avenue would actually help? in shortening distances and making it quite easy for people to for us to reach a wider sense of people apart from just gathering people within the school four walls of the school setting sorry i didn't get the question so don't you think it's it, it, it will it's apart from the challenges that uh, prof rashid has said don't you think it's it, it's a very viable way of connecting the world with ease. Yeah, yeah, right. So, in fact, I was actually thinking, I was actually going to say that I, in a very, very uh, mild way, disagree with uh, Dr. Rashid, even on the disadvantages of uh, classroom, I'm sorry, on the advantages of classroom teaching and disadvantages. For me, I'm more in support of what, of course, apart from the COVID-19 situation now, is actually, there are so many advantages actually to to learning to online learning mm. and if you apart from the advantage like you said sir, about being able to reach a wider audience it's actually a thing of flexibility on the part of both the students and the teachers in the sense that once um mr rafael said something earlier about teachers recording um maybe recording their, their Video classes video recording, yes. their lectures on, on WhatsApp or something like that. But I also want to ask a question based on that, that how do we actually define giving online lessons? Is it actually, do we actually basically want basic interaction the way we have in a classroom where we have, just like we are having now, you're right here in front of me, because we also have a, an option of you can record and have material, record and the students materials, can actually yes. go online and assess their materials. So mm -hmm. if that is the case, then there's not much difference if a teacher then decides, because especially for a case like Nigeria, you have to make do with what is on ground. And yeah. what is on ground is that people can easily assess WhatsApp or whatever it is, and that's actually what we can work with for now in that kind of environment. And then so when we have a situation where in a case like Nigeria, I think the problem is because we are not really used to all these kind of things. We are actually basically used to four walls of the classroom. If it's a building situation where we are we have had this culture of doing things online, not depending on the teachers to do everything, being able to work by oneself, uh, then this will be really be seeing the advantages of actually all these things beyond because if it's class uh, face to face classroom lecture now you have a lecture at nine o'clock you have to leave everything you are doing because you want to run to school to do this but if you are having an online lecture you can actually especially for the ones that is already recorded you can always assess your materials over and over at your yeah. own convenient time you can take care of your children you can do other things you can even combine work and then do online rather than when you are running to do one class to another and to the next and to the next. and then another advantage is the fact that when you are doing face-to-face -face, um classroom teaching the teacher is already talking and so many things is already lost in the process you are writing but if it's online most times the notes are always there you can always go back to your notes and check it again so i think it's a matter of 
what we are just being used to and what we are actually open to accept. And right now, this is the new reality, actually. New reality. Cecilia, yeah. can you please adjust your your microphone? Yes, ah. we can't hear uh, it. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 back to you, Raphael. Can you, can you take your take on this? You know, yes, the last I, time when we discussed, okay. you said, we, we said that the the online thing can be emotionally draining. Yes. Yes. Have okay, so, yes. First, more what and Dr. Cecilia said. There are there are advantages actually because even most times, most of the learning we do online on YouTube, because there are other learning platforms that we go to get materials from. It's not like they are they are live. It's not like we're getting the, the teaching or the learning live immediately. No, we're not. But you see, it's it's something that we're not used to. And then this pandemic happened so 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 fast. We weren't, we weren't anticipating it. We didn't we didn't expect it. And most kids, most kids, like I work a lot with children. Most kids they're not used to just going to get online materials from their teachers just to say, okay, I want to watch my teacher teaching um, via video, all of that. They want to see the teacher teaching. So, like, let me come down. Let me narrow. Let me bring my explanation down home to what I'm practicing right now. So, we have an online an online platform where we upload um, stuff that we want the children to do. So if we want the children to watch a video, for example, we upload it on our own YouTube channel, and then we put the link out for the children to, of course, download and listen and learn. But at least twice a week, at least twice a week, we have one real life class, one real life class. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the platform on which we do that, but we have one real life class um, on one of these platforms for learning. So the children, they know that, okay, at 9 a.m., everyone has to be, everyone has to be on, you have to log on, and then the teacher is going to teach you. And of course, most of these online platforms, they have time restraints. So 40 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever the restraint is. So the teacher plans his lesson um, to, 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 to be delivered at that specific time. And when it, when it, when it's done, it tells the, it refers the children back to the online platform where they go to get other materials, could be videos, could be worksheets, could be other things they have to, to learn. Now, I said something about it being emotionally draining because like I said, like even Dr. Celia, Cecilia attested to, we're not used to this. This is new terrain for us. This is new terrain for us. So a lot of people are not used to it. A, a student said something to, me, something to me, said, why do we have to wake up at nine? We are home. Why do we have to now? Why do people have to put our lesson at 9 a.m.? I'm like, come on. It's like school. It's like you're going to school. So some people think that because we're doing online learning, it means that you can wake up anytime you like and then Oh, just log on. Oh, see, the, the program is that I can check. I check. I can check it anytime I like. No, there is a time limit to when you can do this. Our classes are from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. You have this video or this thing to watch. Watch it at this time. Give me your feedback. Do what you have to do. And then I also notice on our own end that uh, we think that we are we are working with time. We're not, because sometimes some parents reach out to you at 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 10 p.m., 9, 11 p.m. asking you questions as to. Oh yeah, sorry, my child doesn't understand this. What did you? And at the point, you have to say, "Come on, there is a time but, to do this." Don't is, just, is that not an invasion of your privacy? It is. It is. That's what we're saying. But but because the 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 the, the, the it has moved away from the normal classroom where they can't just normal they can't reach you. Um, so many people think many people think that oh because it's, we're doing online learning and virtual learning now, so we can reach the teacher anytime we want. After all, we have his WhatsApp number, or we have something, we can just call him or send him a message or say, my child doesn't understand this. But I, So that's where, that's the angle from which I'm coming from, that sometimes it can be draining. But as we progress, I guess we'll get better at it anyway. As we progress, and you think we should continue to progress without <laughs> four words of... Okay, let me get, get to the uh, professor Rashid. I, uh, somebody, I, I think you need to respond to this question, sir. He says those who stay in society where things really work might not understand the challenges we face where internet and power is not good. And these are some of the challenges that we do face when it comes to the aspect of the internet, uh, the, the virtual learning thing. Learning, yes. Yes, uh, Dr. Rashid, can you respond to this? Uh, actually, uh, it is true because uh, particularly some of the, the, the children here, the students here, 
never never had the kind of experiences that uh, we go through in Africa. Uh, let me take myself as example. At least I have children who have had experience of learning in Nigeria and uh, here. And so I, I can say transition in the two and the challenges that we empathize with the people back home because we understand the level of technological advancement at home and the challenges of electricity, <laughs> the challenges of better. Uh, for example, here, uh, when uh, the students were to be migrated to the online platform, <coughs> parents were informed. Those who need a Chromebook were, were told to, to be at home. They brought the Chromebook home. The Chromebook already has internet. You just log on and it is seamless. Wow. Mm. And all the side that need that is given. And it already has uh, it already has uh, unlimited data on it. That even after the class period, the children can be with it 24 hours, streaming, walking, oh, and so on and so forth. So you can then, for a person who has been in Nigeria, who, because I was speaking with one of the uh, owners of a private school in Nigeria, and we're brainstorming on how to go about this situation. And he said, how do we do it? Here are parents who could barely manage the data of uh, 500 Naira, and that will not take more than an hour or so to end. <laughs> Exactly. After every class that they will be they will be doing that. And what about the challenges of electricity and so on and so forth? We the people here, the children that are born here may never ever be able to put themselves in that street because they've never experienced this. Experienced that. Yeah. So for those that we brought from Nigeria and who came here, they, they could speak more on that aspect and they could really tell you the differences and how they empathize with their mates in uh, in Africa. This is a again a warning or a lesson for our government to be proactive, to be to to be proactive and to be uh, committed sincerely to the development of the nation. To be committed sincerely to the development of the nation. So uh, I, I think this is what I'm saying in that. Doctor, Dr. Albert. Okay, yes, yes. See, Dr. Albert, the reality, the reality of the, the issue is, okay, so um, uh, <laughs> I, work, I work in different schools. I work in different schools. So, um, and both uh, the, the, the schools are not all at the same level. The schools are not all at the same level. Yes. One of the very big schools I work with I mean, it was easy. It was easy for them to say, oh, we're starting the online thing. And even parents that had three, four children could cope. You have four, five children in a, in a school and, at the, and they're all having online lesson at the same time. And parents, a, a parent said to me that she has four different ISPs at home, four. So, and they are all on. So anyone that is failing, she switches to the next one. How many parents can afford that? To have, can afford that. I mean, how many parents can afford that? You, how many parents can afford to have four different gadgets or five different gadgets at home. Like you have tabs for all your children. How many children, you know, we look at this thing from, we, we are living in a, we are, we are in a, um, in an, we are under an administration now that everything is utopian to them. They don't know what is happening. The minister of education will tell you he doesn't know what is happening. Oh, I don't know. The president says he doesn't know. Everybody's living like anything you tell them like, oh, is that happening? They, they don't know what is happening. In, um, um, uh, in Lagos State, how many people are in private schools? How many people? How many people? A lot of these children are in government schools. They are not going to be able to afford this thing. They are not going to be able to, able to learn anything at this period. How many schools can come together? And even the WhatsApp, even something as simple as sending videos on WhatsApp. A, a teacher said something to me. A teacher in one of these local schools said, how many of their parents in these schools even understand how to use WhatsApp? Even know that there is WhatsApp, that you can communicate on WhatsApp, that you can send video to them on WhatsApp. It's not, it's not realistic. If this pandemic continues, education is just going to be strictly for the elite. 
and then the inequality in the society is going to be so obvious that everybody will know that oh my god we are not going anywhere as a nation what um, uh, um the doctor said dr rashid said is so true children that were born up here and then you go to the us and you see that the, the environment is totally different imagine saying that you get you get a, a gadget that has chrome imbued with unlimited data oh my god and when you said that i felt like crying <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's, it's just, it's just something else. But, but, but that's, but who is, okay, okay, so, so, yeah, go ahead. No, so, sorry, I just wanted to add to what both of you said that in this case, then, of course, the, the, the problem is actually coming, as we all know, from the top, that's from the government. Very, very the way true. the education sector has actually been handled right from the very beginning. We all know how much budget is being given to education and everything like that. And that's actually what is affecting us now. And yeah. if I remember looking at the situation of COVID-19 and what happened to education in Nigeria post COVID-19, then it's not really, it is, everybody has to actually contribute something to it. Every stakeholder, starting from maybe te uh, telecom providers, for example. How come uh -huh. internet is so expensive in Nigeria? People switch off their phone. I'm, I mean, I, I don't mean to, I mean, it's really sad. When you want to chat with someone in Nigeria and they will say, yeah, I switch off my data. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, I'm that's what happens. I mean, that's I mean, what happens. I know, but it's really sad. And so, is it people oh, who now gosh. say, okay, go and go online and learn? Where's the data to learn? So everybody has to contribute <laughs> something. The globe, MTN people, what exactly are they doing for people at this particular time? In this, in the United States, for instance, everybody, every even up to KFC, whatever, they are donating food, donating this and that. Every company, everything. Well, I don't know what Nigeria. I'm not really following Nigeria news. <coughs> permit me, I'm sorry, but I don't really know if they are really doing anything. But now, no, no, they are. They are not doing anything. You're not. You're not wrong. Nothing has been done. We've not heard. We've not heard uh, anything. Uh, nothing has been done. Nothing. Yeah. No service uh, provider. No service provider has come to say. In fact, let me even shock you. So you want to. You want to subscribe to your data. I was in a class yesterday. I'm ashamed to say this. I was in a class yesterday, on an online class, and my data ran out. I was in an online class and my data ran out. The class stopped. I didn't know what was happening, but I just said, let me quickly check my data. And I checked, I was like, oh my God, it was finished. I quickly had to get data. See, you want to subscribe now. The, 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 they will tell you that, oh yeah, oh we've, we are doing promo, we're doing bonuses. And then you pay so, so, and so Naira and then you get so, so. It's a lie. They give you the bigger um, data uh, packages for small money. And then that data is going to finish so quickly. You'll be amazed at how quickly it finished. They're not doing anything. Their data is so expensive. It's not a joke. And even this period, none of them have even come out to say, oh, yeah, we're partnering with, uh, with the private sector. We're yes, going to be giving yes, schools I nothing. Want to, I want to respond to that. I want to respond to that. Uh, okay. Because yes, uh, well, if we are talking about social responsibility of, uh, of a private company, we must first understand that uh, the main aim of the private company is to make profits. True. We understand that they have a social responsibility to the environment or the society where they are created or where they operate. But we must also take into cognizance all the other challenges that some of these uh, companies face in Nigeria. The money they spend on on even maintaining their math, their system alone, and the, the, the cost of productions for them too, we are not saying that they cannot support the government by making provisions of, uh, how do they do it? Will they share data into everybody's phones? No, they, they make it cheaper. Also <laughs> they are also paying international space. And they are also connected to international organizations they are, that they have to pay. The bottom line of this, for me, still go to the government. The bottom line of it still go to the government. Here, for example, I have not seen any of the private organization who says, well, we give you data. But although there are many companies giving all sorts of things, but the system has been developed to a stage, a stage that government itself is proactive and involved in technological advancements. 
Yes. And our uh, government is responsible to these organizations so much that when events like this happen, they are also ready to show that they can reciprocate that level of responsibilities. So I think the what I'm trying what I'm trying to do is so that we don't look at it from their perspective only. We also look at it from the general factors that uh, affect this kind of a uh, reaction in a corrupt, endemically corrupt uh, <laughs> system. So, and, uh, because corrupt. Of this private they have to, they have to, they have to pay to get oh basic things that does not require uh, a payment. So, I agree that they they need to come up and be responsible and uh, see a way by which they can support the people. And I support your statement, the statement you made that education will, will, will be limited to the, to the, to the elite or uh, to those who are, who are up to do or those who can afford it. Yes. Because if this, is, if this continue, I, I imagine if it happened during our time, many of us here will not be educated. Because some of us went to Jack of the school. Exactly. And I cannot see how to go to the school and survive. I just survive. Time. Uh, I don't I don't see it. So uh, it's so unfortunate, it's so terrible that we pray that this situation uh, <clears throat> change and that the the populace too deserve the kind of government that they have. I think this should open the eye of the populace. And also know that uh, we need to be proactive with even our governance. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, sir, okay, for example, uh, uh, Raphael, Raphael, sir, okay. uh, uh, somebody said I was surprised when the Lagos State Governor said children could learn online. Yeah. I, I really wonder how a child in the remote villages without light, without uh, connection online connections because uh, many of the villages remote villages in lagos don't have online connections i've been to yeah. some villages where you will not find any bar on your phone of course and there are schools in those those places of course and this is how Babalola is saying lagos state governor said there is uh online and when we talk about online now, they, they, they will shift to the radio stations. They shift to the radio television. stations, exactly, exactly. <laughs> How many of these children also have TVs, uh, television in their homes to exactly. watch? And even when they have, what control do they have over that? Can you respond to this? So, yes, very good, because that's part of the things I even wanted to talk about. We are, we are talking about the education level of even the parents of these people. And... and and someone was, someone was, I was having this, this discussion too before, before now, where the person was saying something about, um, oh, there's a radio station, there's TV, there's all of that. I said no. Okay. Uh, can you, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, it's like your, 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 your yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but I'm beginning to hear myself. The, 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 the. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, fantastic. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> Lagos State, Lagos State is a is one of the, the the most terrible states in Nigeria. We're living a lie. Lagos State is living a lie. You know, that pseudo mindset of this is a mega city is a farce. Everybody can hear me say that. I can't say that anywhere. Is it? They are a, from from the Jagaban to everybody to the present governor and everybody who are living a lie. The mega city thing is a lie. So when people say Lagos, they think that Lagos is just Ikoi and then Banana Island and VGC and all that. We're talking about the people in Ajegule, in Okoko, in, in Bariga, in, in Mount 12, in Ikorodu. How will those children learn? That is the real thing. Those Recently, the one million boys bothered a lot of Lagos. People could not sleep. People were doing vigilante. Many fathers were off. 
couldn't sleep and all of that in this same mega city because we're living a lie. The radio station, the TV thing they're talking about, how effective are those? What are the content being put out there? The teachers that are even good, are they, are they, are they happy? We're talking about people that have not been paid. Parents don't even know where they are going to get money from. People who don't have salary, they have not eaten. There are so many things bedeviling this learning right now. We're hearing of other countries giving policies to their citizens, taking care of us. But what has the Lagos State government done? Nothing. I was coming home the other day. I saw a van and a microphone and camera. And I said, what's happening here? The man said, oh, that they brought rice. They want to share. So they're trying to cover the other. How many of you got it? Only very few. The other day in the Korodu, they brought, they brought, um, they, they were supposed to get, um, is, it, is it 10 bags of rice or so? They only brought two. Is it the same people that have not eaten that will now have time for their children to come and sit down and listen to radio, watch TV and learn? We switch Nepal, we switch life. Sorry, sir, doctor. It's not working. It's, it's, it's all a lie. I'm sorry. Okay. I think uh, to respond to that, too, uh, for me, I always say that uh, the greatest sin is uh, self deception. For me, I believe that the greatest sin in the world is self deception. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, what we have in the country is also some level of self-deception. Uh, where you see a government who understands the situation of the country, understands the state of the country, and present a false political correctness to the people. Although this level of false political correctness is, is in every government, including in the advanced world. But again, there are always people who call the government to order when statements that are geared toward political correctness are made. And that, again, is, is lacking in our country. The, those people who can stand up to the government to, to make a fact statement, to refute statements like that when they are made. When the government said uh, they will go online, and then uh, when I read on, I read again that they will have periods where they will be uh, presenting educational programs on TV. What came to my mind is, well, I know attempts must be made. It's better than doing nothing. And uh, I know that they cannot reach everybody they cannot get to everybody but at least if it is two percent that they are able to get to it is better for the government to be frank and be sincere and and let the populace understand the limitation so that some people will not feel cheated or left out we talk about social responsibility we are here without going out without stepping out we have we have companies that come every 12 o'clock to give food to the children anybody wow. from the age of 18 <laughs> it gets to a point that when you see them you don't even want to come out you don't want to come out you don't want to and they bring it every time without asking for it the government paid 1200 into each person's account and for a family husband and wife you got 2400 in your account for a child is 500. So if you have three children, you know you get 1,500 for your children, 2,400 for the two of you. You have $3,900 in your hands. Apart no, from they, several they, other uh, local Dr. Doctor, let me, let me continue. Yes. We also have palliatives. <laughs> At least in That's our wonderful. Street, in our street. <laughs> Our street, we had uh, I think a bag of rice for our <laughs> and it said that that bag of rice was for the poorest of the poor. <laughs> and I told them to define I saw it. the poorest of the poor is. I saw it and I felt very, very sad. I, I wept when I saw some of these things. And uh, so there is a need for the government to be sincere with the people or to be focused in terms of the targeted audience that I think some educational administrators can still be uh, consulted to find a way out of this. I do not believe that there is no, no way out. 
I believe that regardless of the level of our development, technological and otherwise, there is a way out by which the government can still reach out to people. If it involves working with local governments and seeing how the government can uh, create certain channels, even, even if it involves uh, sending recorded, recorded classes, I know that it will not get to everybody and not everybody can even download such a thing, but not to do anything is wrong. Something still needs to be done. It's so unfortunate. Yeah. So, uh, I will go to uh, Dr. Celia. What's your last take on this? Yeah, um, like, like Dr. Otun Rashid said earlier, I think it all boils down to. Uh, what the government has to do for everybody, actually, that's actually how we move forward with this for Nigeria. In terms of Germany, just like the US, they are, they are already taking care of in terms of education, they will be fine. Even if in my, in my office yesterday, they wrote promotions and say, listen, all of you stay at home till August. Even though the government say, yeah, you can start going back to your work now, they say, no, just stay in August, work from home, you are fine. So, but in Nigeria right now, I know a lot of people that have already called me and told me, yeah, we lost our jobs already. So, I think it still boils down to what the government has to do for the people and what and every one of us do, like every stakeholder who has to contribute. Because if we have in our mindset already that we have to help one another. That's what I said earlier that the, for the companies is about the, making their money. But sometimes, right now, everybody's in a problem. They all want to make problem, and everybody has to contribute their part to solve whatever problem, no matter how little it is. Sent only one mark the other day to the governor of New York. That is a gesture. So even though they are trying to make a profit, whatever little thing they can do for the government they can do, we can have somebody donate 10 iPads or something for students. Another person 10. There are some people who can actually really afford that even at all. So everybody has to play their own part and the government has to play its own part. And then little by little we will get there. Yes, it's a long way to go. But maybe another one year, maybe one and a half years, but we'll get there somehow. Yeah, I don't know yeah. Elastic, sir. Okay. Um, you know, you know this thing that um, Dr. Rashid said about we all as a stakeholders doing our own part. You know, one of the greatest challenges we're having right now is not even that we don't want to do our part. You know, this thing of social distancing is a very, very big problem because if this was um, a situation where social distancing is not even an issue, one can say, for example, we can gather children around, try to teach them and all that. Right now, you can't even do that. So everybody that wants to learn has to do it online because that way we can maintain the social distancing. You can't gather children. You can't gather people. So you can't even, for example, say you want to go to rural areas and you want to go and help, you want to go and teach, you're going to be violating the rules of social distancing. Even though um, Nigeria says um, May 4th, people can resume. Lagos State government, for example, has said schools are going to remain closed. Schools are closed. So Lagos State government has said schools are closed. They are not opening the school in the nearest future. They, not, they have no plan for it. So it's, it's a real concern. But social distancing is a problem. So we will now have to be depending and praying that, okay, the people that can, can learn, well, they keep learning. Those that can't learn, well, I don't know, maybe days by moonlight, turning through, go back to the olden days way of learning, gather in the evening, in the night. I don't know how they are going to do it, but it's, it's I don't know. I feel, I feel really sad. I feel like the, 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 the there's no, because Nigeria, there's no plan. There is nothing, there is nothing you can see. The president just comes every, every two weeks, makes a pre-recorded speech and disappears into oblivion. There is no plan, there is nothing on ground. So the elite will keep learning and then those who can catch up, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to happen. Professor Rashid, your last take, sir. I think uh, one aspect I want to conclude is on the issue of consequences. 
I think we need to take away from here consequences that there must be consequences for actions. And when if our mind is focused on consequences, the government will do what is right. If individuals understand the meaning of consequences of actions, everybody will be involved in doing right. When government know that when he's not paying his tax, the people will not come out to vote for him or her, and then the government will not continue to be in power, they will do what is right. But poverty to get Hello. I'm not hearing. Okay. <laughs> it's like the line, I think we've lost him. Uh, but, well, um, yeah. we, 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 I want to end with what uh, Mrs. Fadike Aofolaju Babalola has written, which is quite very pungent to the discussion we have around it. She said the point is this. We have missed it in the pre-COVID. Exactly. And we, missed, and we missed it big time. Yes. We are far behind, and COVID-19 is showing us more clearly that we are far behind. What we need to talk about now is the post-COVID-19. Which way, Nigeria? Nigeria. <laughs> we really need to know what we are doing we need to stop collecting money from politicians and start asking for quality service for our nation. Mm -hmm. And I think if there is any time we really need to talk, it should be now. Yes. And if there's any time we need to de demand for quality service from our leaders <laughs> and hold them to account, I think it is now. Yes. Because it's like uh, the future of the nation is being toyed with. If you talk with the future of education, you are talking with the future of the nation. And the children that we are teaching right now will lead the nation in the future. Mm -hmm. And since we did not make adequate preparation during the pre-COVID experience, now we are getting what we really deserved, what we actually planned for. We are, we are reaping what we have sown. And that's the reason why the charge and onus is on us to ask for credible leaders in forthcoming elections. We shouldn't just walk with sentiment. And those of us who are in the leadership position should see this as a time bomb. Because right now, a lot of uh, teaching and learning is going on half-heartedly. Well, thank God for the likes of Raphael and several other people that are doing their lectures on Zoom, via Zoom, or via Skype. How about those who don't have it? The children are just there, wallowing. And by the time schools finally reopen, that is where we start leaking our wounds and then counting our losses. Exactly. So, so like what Shukuma and Tony has said, the time for change is now. I want to say a big thank you for joining us. Dr. Cecilia Drujai, thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for having us. For, 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 for this time. Uh, Dr. Rashid, sorry, we, we lost you there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. Yeah, you, you know our system now. You know our... <laughs> Uh, okay. does not seem to agree with the U.S. network. Everybody should should demand for accountability, and we demand also that our leaders take responsibility for their action. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So once again, I want to say big thank you for spending your time. Send me well to the family, sir. Thank you, Rafael. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank and you. Thank you, everyone, for sparing the time to watch us. Good night thank and God bless. Thank Good you. Night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>